Okay, thank you. Good, good, good afternoon. My name is uh, Kuo Wong Singh. Uh, my bachelor's degree is physics and it's changed to uh, demography. I study uh, master and PhD at the University of Pennsylvania uh, in demography. I major in demography and minor in economics. Uh, the reason why I shared from physics to demography because uh, when I was the uh, study, uh, I'm the president of a student union uh, in Chulalongkorn University and the, the vice president for student affairs, they, they, they would like to have some uh, demographer who have background in mathematics because most of the demographer uh, are major in sociology. So they uh, uh, convinced me to study demography. The reason I explained was if not, the, you, you, you have some question why I share from physics to uh, demography. My, my major field is uh, uh, population and, and development uh, related to the, the mathematical statistical projection, the so called statistics. Statistical demography. I I project population and uh, study the the life cost of the human being uh, to see the sharing of the human capital over time, and also look at the the difference between each group of people. Uh, like Chulalongkorn uh, University, we. We use a demographer to to forecast uh, professor in Chulalongkorn because uh, this year is 90, 92nd year Chulalongkorn. In the past 20 years, we study uh, some faculty, the really old faculty, like a faculty of medicine, faculty of engineering, and we uh, we call. Uh, around to the to the administrator and the faculty of medicine and faculty of political uh, and, and, and faculty of uh, science is very is very old it's an aging population so Jolan Mukon have to prepare young professor in order to uh, substitute the retired professor. Okay. This is what I do for for my for my work. I'm, I'm teaching uh, population uh, development and also uh, uh, projection uh, uh, population into the future. Uh, thank you. Uh, part of uh, my lecture, 
after this lecture, because uh, Ho Sensei is going to focus on more theoretical, the conceptual framework, and I'm going to take you to more in terms of the case study, with more focus on the public sphere and the intimate sphere from different perspectives, from the perspective of different issues and different um, uh, geographical uh, perspective. So that I hope that you will enjoy. And I'm glad that we have lots of students here because now in the um, world arena that has prepared for uh, global development, you have heard about million, Millennium Development Gold. If you take a look at the profiles of the people there, demographers, sociologists are there. Lots of them, so you may be part of them in the future because we are going to um, bring in more and more new human capital in this arena. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so then, uh, so could, they, uh, so could you please start your lecture? Thank you very much. Good afternoon again. So, uh, my topic today will be first and second geography uh, David. You can interrupt me anytime if you want to ask me. Yeah? This is the, what, what I teach in Thailand, Master and PhD. You can interrupt and we can learn it. Okay. Because they said, if we synergy, one plus one can, be, can equal more than two. Okay? But if you hospitality, one plus one will be one, one and a half. But if it differentiate, one plus one can be less than one. Okay, so we will die. Okay? Uh, demographic evidence. Uh, this one uh, by uh, Professor David Wu. It's a discussion made by a demographer that uh, population is changing and we will have uh, more uh, dependency or aging and the population in the labor force will decline after a while when, uh, when uh, fertility declines. So uh, the, the demography economics makes us. Uh, this lecture will highlight uh, the importance of the nexus between demographic change and economic growth. The central message is that uh, demography matters a great deal of economic growth. This is particular in terms of the effect of the structure on the economic wheel, labor, labor supply, number and composition of the, of the workforce, saving uh, human capital, productivity of the workforce, the area of workforce and saving, the accumulation of human capital, and therefore on the productivity of the workforce. force. The labor supply is also a, a very huge uh, topic. Saving also another, another, another important, important uh, uh, subject. And human capital. Uh, human capital uh, is a function of uh, education, health, and training. Why, why I say uh, human capital is a function of education, health, and training? Because education is the flow of labor. The student is the flow of labor. And uh, uh, training is the stock of labor. Training is the people who already graduated in the labor market. Okay. And health is part of the human capital because uh, if the labor force is healthy, uh, it will be create more productivity. That's why uh, human capital is a function of education, health, and training. Okay? And productivity workforce, uh, we, we need more uh, productive workforce. And, and in, or, in order to uh, be a better work, workforce, uh, uh, the, the student, uh, when, when we teach, uh, we have to uh, create uh, human capital in the future. 
students should have skill and competency. Basic skill is reading, writing, mathematics. And, and competency is uh, social and culture, uh, ICT, entrepreneur, and this kind of thing is, uh, is, the, is the competency. And, and behavior of a uh, workforce of saving the accumulation of human capital and therefore on the productivity of workforce. Uh, saving is important because uh, now uh, uh, in European country or even in East Asia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, now the proportion of aging is becoming bigger and bigger. So the labor force, when they are still uh, young, they should have more saving uh, to be used in the future. Okay, because the dependency, the support ratio is declining. Uh, in Thailand, now uh, six workers take care of one elderly. In another, in another 20 years, it will be only four labor take care of one. And in another uh, maybe 40 years, only two labor take care of one elderly. Okay. So uh, saving is also very important. Uh, I, I said demography, demography economic nexus uh, is related. You can see from, from, from this uh, figure that uh, there are uh, demographic, demographic process. This is not in the hand now, I just, I just do it this morning because uh, when, when I, when I Look at this demography and economic nexus. Uh, it's better uh, have a figure so that you, you can have more ima imagination than because this one I says there are relation between demography and economics. Okay, it's very difficult to understand, but this one you can understand that uh, demographic process, uh, fertility, mortality, and migration. If you have, if the country have. Uh, very high for trading, the, the demographic process to affect the demographic outcome. The age structure will be a very huge period. Okay? But if uh, low for trading, uh, like in Japan now, or in, uh, in urban area in Bangkok, now in, in Bangkok, the for trading is only one. In Japan, it's around 1.27 or something. I can show you the different uh, uh, the process of low fertility and high fertility. Uh, what will happen? This is the picture. I compare compare uh, Thailand, Italy, and Japan. This is 1950. Okay, when we forecast in the future, you can see. Thailand uh, in 1970, uh, total fertility is 6.3, now only 1.6. Okay. And Italy and Japan, is, uh, you can see that uh, fertility is declined very fast and the, the, the structure will share very fast also. You can see the share. Okay. So demographic process will affect the demographic outcome. This, this one. Demographic process. This is demographic process. Effect, demographic outcome. If uh, high for 3D, the pyramid will be uh, very huge uh, 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 younger people. Okay? So demographic process will affect demographic outcome by this picture. And later on, the, 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 the pyramid for Italy will turn upside down. Okay? See? So it's upside down. So this one uh, is the explanation that demographic process will affect the demographic outcome. 
Demographic outcome will affect the social economic process. In other words, if the, the country has a very high proportion of uh, people under age 15, uh, so they will, uh, that country will have less saving and more investment because you have to invest in school, you have to invest in education. Okay? So the demographic outcome will affect the social economic process. Saving investment, land, labor utility, consumption of good service. If it aging population also, you will have less investment. Okay, because low labor force. And the consumption uh, for the younger population and aging population, the consumption is different. Because if it's young, young, younger population, the consumption will be on food, on education. But if it's aging, the consumption will be on housing, on health care. Yeah. And socioeconomic process will affect the so socioeconomic outcome. If you have less investment, if you have less investment, uh, so the unemployment, you, you have a lot of unemployment. Yeah. Uh, you will have less uh, health uh, investment. Okay. So if socioeconomic process it's not in a, in, a, in a good policy. The social outcome also, you will have a lot of unemployment or underemployment. Okay? And if uh, you, you, you spend less money on, on health, if, if uh, some country now in, in African country, uh, really less investment in health, so the health status also will affect. And when health status affect, you know, a lot of house, household, they will have more, more fertility. In the past, you know, uh, we call it insurance and uh, insurance effect. When, when, their, when their children die, so they have more children. In other, we call it insurance or replacement effect. Have, have you ever heard that? You know, it poor, poor uh, household, when they, they have a lot of kids die, so they have more kids. We call that insurance or replacement effect. Okay. So the economic, socioeconomic outcome will affect the demographic process and demographic outcome. So this is demographic and uh, economic cycle. Okay, you, you follow that? Any question? You can, you can ask any time, <laughs> because uh, Professor Ibiko told me to, to speak with a story, and I, I would like to have a dialogue. If you want to, you can ask any time, okay? You can ask in Japanese. You can ask in Japanese, but somebody will <laughs> translate to me. I know only two words, dobo and doso. <laughs> So I, uh, so demograph demography, economy, nexus. Now, now it's your hand out. Labor force particip uh, participation tend to be higher among kids, 15 to 64 years old, than in other age school. In other words, when when a low for trading, okay, the population in the in the labor force has really increased. Uh, you can look at this picture. Thailand uh, start to have a population policy in 1970. We have population, we have fertility 6.3. And uh, in, 19, in 1980, fertility declined to uh, around 4. And in 1990, you can see that the, the people in the labor force, this group, start to increase. And the younger population start to decline. Okay. 
And you can look at, at Japan uh, in 1990, a lot of uh, proportion of the labor force increased, also in Italy. But later on, uh, the proportion in the labor force will start to decline. When you have a high proportion in the labor force, we call it demographic dividend. You start to have demographic dividend. Okay? You see, Thailand starts to have very high proportion in the labor force. But later on, it will start to decline, and the aging people, you see, the aging people start to increase. So demographic dividend is gone after uh, proportion of, of the labor force is declining. Okay? okay. So the labor force participation tends to be higher among yes, 15 to 64 years old than in other groups. The younger are either at home or in school while consume consuming resources they do not produce. The older are retired from workforce, either reduce or switch their production by using their accumulate well for retirement consumption. Labor force participation tends to be highest among the age, 25 to 49. They generate income while they partially spend on their need. And working age, adults on the whole, produce more than they consume. <coughs> The excess go to children consumption and bill accumulation. You see, in the uh, in the year 1970, uh, children we, uh, we call will flow. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Professor Carbell, they said the agrarian society the will flow flow from children to the household because they use children to work in the field, okay? So we call the wheel flow in, in the old time when the, the fertility is uh, more than five. It's a wheel flow from children to the household. But right now, uh, less children, the wheel flow flow from uh, father and mother to the children, you see. Now, uh, in Bangkok, one child, so we call it one child was spoiled by 10 people. Okay, father and mother, grandfather, grandmother, four grand grandfather, grandmother, and four great grandfather. So 10 people spoil one, one children. So the wheel flow is reverse. Uh, instead of from children to the household, now the household to children. Okay. But in Thailand, I, I try to convince the policy panel that you don't, uh, you, you are not, uh, I mean, it's not a good policy to spoil the children. You have to make this one child to be a superman or super girl. Because this one child, we have to take care of 10 people in the future. Okay? But the new generation we call it the postmodern generation. The postmodern generation is a, they, they are a symbolism. They are not, uh, you know, they are not objectivity. Everything uh, they think there is the symbolism. They are not object objectivity. Okay. So the labor force participation tend to uh, be highest among the yes, 35 to 49. They generate income. Okay. Uh, education is part of human capital formation. Education contribute directly to the quality of life and directly to economic well-being by increasing productivity, which in turn promote their high, high wage and better standing standard of living. Like I mentioned that human capital is education, health and training. Okay? You are part of, it, of the education, but when you go out to the labor force, uh, <coughs> government have to build up a training program in order to improve the human capital. Okay? The peak uh, saving years seem to be between age 45 to 65, after children have left the home and as people prepare for retirement. At the state of the life cycle, when saving behavior is especially strong, national saving lies 
This plus plus log s is take for the entire cohort to h beyond this age. Okay. Uh, demographic dividend uh, can have another word. This is not in the hand now. I, I, I just asked some, some more. Uh, you can call demographic dividend or the UNFPA, they call window of opportunity of or demographic bonus. Uh, Williamson uh, called it demographic gift. Frank you call it this demographic opportunity. And Warren's call it demographic golden age. And Engelio call it demographic dividend. So you can, I mean, it's the same thing. Demographic dividend, demographic bonus, uh, window of opportunity, uh, demographic golden age. It's the same thing. Okay? Or demographic window. Okay? And uh, you, can, you can lead more in the UNF. You have FPA, or uh, in, uh, I, I can give you this handout again. You know, I asked more this morning, uh, so that uh, more explanation. Okay. Demographic uh, economic nexus again to uh, recapitulate the demographic wealth create and especially large generation of individuals who, when they reach the working years will supply better amount of labor and saving and be healthier and better educated. See, like I said that now uh, uh, in Eastern Asia uh, is one child, mostly 1.23 something, very, very, uh, very uh, low fertility. So uh, this 1 or 1.5 or 1.2 children, they have to take care of 10 people in the future. And, and with the medical, uh, uh, the better of medical, it can be, uh, in China they call it one per two per four. One child per father and mother and four great grandfather, four, four uh, grandmother and grandfather. But with the medical help, it can be one per two per four per four. In other words, one child has to take care of father and mother Grandfather, grandmother, great grandfather, great grandmother. Okay, so uh, we are sociologists. We, in the past uh, 15 years in, in my college, we studied three generations. Now we have to study four generations. Another 20 years maybe we have to study five generations because they live longer. Okay. So, so sociology have more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> the transfer, the transfer to more uh, human and physical capital, which push out the, the frontier of production, possibility of the economies in which they take place. Nation uh, that learn to take advantage of this expand possibility can con can attain considerably more rapid improvement in the standard of living of their people. In other words, uh, when you have very high proportion in the labor force, and, and this labor force, very high uh, labor income, they should have less, uh, not that much, uh, they should have moderate consumption in order to have more saving for the future. But if they use all the money that uh, on of the start, on of their uh, stipend, they are no saving. So when they are getting old, the society have to take care of them. But the society in the future is only one child. So the society will be in trouble. Okay. Uh, key aspect of demographic uh, economy nexus: demographic dividend, the economic benefits that. The life form demographic change in terms of a future of a structure with the tendency of the working age population to grow more rapidly than the overall population once fertility has been declined. Okay. Demographic dividend may also call demographic bonus or window of opportunity or demographic golden age. Demograph demographic dividend or window of opportunity 
Uh, normally, a democratic dividend may occur only once during a democratic transition and last just a few decades. Only once democratic dividend. Because a uh, proportion of the labor will increase. Uh, but later on, when fertility decline, the right, proportion will decline. Why the proportion of the aging increase? Right? Okay. The rising of the proportion of the population in the work, working age relative to that at a dependent age is considered a winter opportunity to accrue economic benefit to both the society and, and each individual population. Uh, four conditions for attaining a demographic dividend. The first one is demographic condition, combination of a decline in mortality, fertility, and dependency ratio. You remember the, the four block that demographic process affect the demographic outcome, and demographic outcome affect the socioeconomic process, and socioeconomic process affect the socioeconomic outcome, and better socioeconomic outcome uh, outcome will affect demographic process. So it's uh, is the population and development, you know, they, they go in a cycle. If you, if you did not plan a very good policy in social economy, it will affect this uh, demographic outcome. Okay. The second one is timing of the de demographic transition, only occur in the middle phase of demographic transition. And existing human resource condition, quality of human resource is very important. In other words, the labor force, the human capital, to have very high education, high skill, and high competency. And policy condition for a more productive workforce, economic policy, labor policy, uh, human resource policy, and financial system. Now Thailand uh, try to uh, create more uh, uh, financial system. In other words, if you are, if you are working now, and you save you saving for the future is a is a tax examination, things like this. This is the a financial system. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, this this is the figure that uh, here in the year two thousand, proportion of the labor force is allowed uh, sixty two percent. It peak, you know, Thailand peak at 67% in the year 2009. Next year, demographic, no demographic dividend, it's starting to decline. We still have demographic dividend, but it's starting to decline. I alarmed this one to the policy panel six years ago. I said, uh, only six more golden year for demographic dividend, but they do nothing. Because politicians usually they think very short term, they don't think long term. Okay? Nobody politician now. <laughs> so after 19, uh, 2009, the proportion you see this uh, uh, pink color declining. Okay? Uh, this one is 0 to 14. I, I call this is like a tsunami. You see, before tsunami, the 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 lip, uh, sea level is declining, right? After declining, uh, now the I call this tsunami aging people is increasing after declining of the wave. Okay, you can see uh, in the year two thousand is only ten percent is sixty and above. In uh, the year twenty twenty five, it will be twenty percent. And Thai people, only 22% of the Thai people have uh, a provident fund. Only 22%. Only the, the people who work in the in the in the uh, in the private sector or the government, we we have a pension fund. But the farmer, they don't have provident fund. Okay, so. Now we try to create this kind of a provident fund for the whole nation. Okay. So we said percentage of the elderly increased twice in 25 years, like a tsunami where you see increased 
from 10 to 20 percent. Okay. Uh, this is because people are living longer and must accumulate more wealth in order to support post-retirement consumption. A larger share of the population is concentrated at older wealthy age. We have to uh, extend the demographic dividend. Can we extend the demographic dividend? Can we? You can extend the demographic dividend if you have a policy like in, in French. Uh, if you got uh, uh, the first child, the, uh, the government will pay you something like a 2,000 euro, second child 4,000 euro, third child 10,000 euro, and you can live uh, for uh, a pregnancy for one year. And you have baby bonus. Okay, Singapore also have this kind of baby bonus. In Thailand, uh, uh, on leave uh, for pregnancy is only three months. But in, in France, it, I think it's one year. And also, not, not only uh, uh, women, uh, husband also can leave to take care of the children also. Uh, extend demographic dividend. Now, in Thailand, uh, fertility is only 1.6. Partly because, uh, uh, like the word of uh, Professor Imigo, that women work in child, child living is a conflict. It's a conflict with, between women work and child living. So in Japan, you have an M curve. Right? You live uh, to take care of your children and you go back to work. For Thai, only we have only two years for M curve, only in Bangkok. But later on, no, no, M, no M curve. Because uh, women in Thailand, they don't live uh, uh, for their work. Because if they live, uh, no pay. And, and, and if you live, when you go back, maybe you cannot find work. Okay, and they said, uh, uh, take, taking care of the, of the children is not only their their uh, their their, what do you call it? their, uh, their, uh, their authority. The husband have to take care also, not only me. Okay, you can see later that uh, the uh, proportion of single in Thailand is increasing, and proportion of uh, and, and divorce rate also increased. We call it uh, DING, I think you know, double income, no kid increased. And now a lot of sing, uh, single income, no kid. Okay. And increasing the dependency ratio, uh, signaling, signaling the, the fading away of the opportunity to capitalize on the demographic condition for a demographic dividend. During that time, there is an increasing proportion of the population who are elderly due to low fertility and stable fertility. So in the past, you know, we, we have more depend dependency in the uh, is less than 50. In the future, dependency will be is 65 and above. If, there are no, if, if, if that group of people have less saving, okay? And increasing in the proportion of the elderly population may lead to a situation which constitute burden to the society, the family and individual population. Okay. The demographic change which constitute burden to the society, family and individuals population may call a demographic bonus. This is Professor Okawa at Nihon University. Uh, he, he also a demographer and the Han University. So I think he is the first one who who, who spell out the demographic honors. Uh, okay. In summary, the first uh, first dividend is like this: increase in population share in the highly productive age, lead to increase in the per capita income. And this increasing in the per capita income, increase in per capita consumption, 
and current living standard, and increase in per capita saving and future living standard. So the policy partner have to decide that the increasing in the per capita income by the very high proportion of the people in the labor force, if, you, if it leads to very high consumption, you have less saving. Okay? But if you uh, sustainable development, you consume not that much, and you save a lot for yourself. You save for yourself, not, not for anybody, because, okay, people in this room, I, I always told my son, uh, right now I am 55, another five years I will be retired. But 67% of the labor force will take care of me. My son is 26 years old, and now he works in New York. I said, you have to save 40%. He said, why? Well, 40% for yourself, not for anybody. <laughs> because in another 25 years old, when you are aging, only two workers take care of you. And that two workers who take care of you, I don't know whether they can take care of themselves or not, with their very really high consumption. Okay? So in this room you have to take you have to save forty percent. But some economists said no. If you if you keep on saving, then you they will have less modifiable effect. So so it depends on, on on the economist. You, you know what I mean? Some economists said if you save more, there are less investment. So some economists will say, spend all of your saving, create create more investment. So it depends. Okay? <laughs> Any question? No. Okay, a second demographic dividend uh, possible to explore. A second demographic dividend would be uh, possible if change in the structure in frame the accumulation of wealth and capital. Should that be the case Aging can, can lead to a sustained increase in standard of living that persists after the demographic dividend has long disappeared. So uh, you will have a certain dividend or not, it depends on the, the accumulation of wealth and capital from the, from the proportion of the labor force while they are still in the labor force. If they have, if they, if they accumulate a lot of wealth, accumulate a lot of saving, you will have second dividend. So second dividend uh, will, will occur or not, it depends on the proportion of the labor force on the decision on the, on the policy. Okay? Okay, this is uh, by Andrew Mason. Andrew Mason is a professor at the University of Hawaii. Uh, he worked with uh, Lon, uh, Lon Lee. Uh, University of Berkeley and also uh, uh, Okawa in the Hawaii University. And uh, this is a figure of an Asian economy life cycle. Uh, the blue color, I didn't use uh, lead and yellow color. In Thai now we have to use another color, no lead and yellow color. No, no, it's just, it's just a joke. <laughs> so, the blue color is a consumption. You see, uh, when you are young, you know you you, you have less uh, consumption, and uh, this is the level income. The pink one is level income. You start to work, and uh, the level income is it start to increase. If the level income is exceeds the consumption, oh, you have more saving. Okay? But if you consume more than your income, you have deficit. Okay? Right now it's a postmodern and they said uh, story is more important than, than the goods. Have you, have you noticed that? They said, okay, uh, uh, this is a tea. Tea is not important. But the story of the tea is more important. You, you, you look in the television, 
they, they advertise every day that uh, this tree is better than the water. So you share the behavior from need to want and to expectation base. Okay? So in sociology, we, we say that the advertiser, they, they, they look only at the value and belief, not go to the norm and the culture. Okay? They try to change the, the belief of the people that you need to drink this water, water rather than pure water. Okay? And pure water, the tap water, not good, you have to drink uh, what? Uh, the water uh, from the mineral water or something. So the story is more important than the goods. Okay? So if you have uh, labor income in more than the consumption, you have more saving. And this picture is like this. Uh, when, when, you, when, you are, when you are young, uh, you have less saving. But when you are working age, right, you, uh, you, you, you consume less than your, your income, so you have more saving. So the saving, when you, when you save, this will transfer and you will have a second dividend. So the second dividend depends depend on uh, if the pink and the blue color is uh, separate. Uh, high labor income, less consumption, more saving. And this saving can be used when you are getting old or when the society is getting old. You can use this money to invest again. Okay. Second dividend, increase in population share in the all low productive age. Increase in demand for all its resources. And now, a policy expand of all its transfer program and increase in capital economy growth to second dividend. In other words, you can use the saving to transfer program, you know, like a, a public transfer, uh, uh, more, more hill uh, resource. But you can, uh, uh, another policy is increase in capital growth second dividend. Like you use that money to invest more. Okay? Saving can be used uh, for public transfer or public transfer and also uh, create another investment. Okay. The future of Asia. Maybe we we, we stop uh, have a break for five minutes or oh, fifteen minutes. Yeah, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, if you like. Oh, we can. It depends. Yeah, you can you can stop at any time. Um, uh, formally at uh, this lecture. Uh, uh, one fifty. Uh, one thirty. One thirty. Uh, no, no. No, 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 2.30. Okay. 2 However, you can stop. Okay, okay, time. we can go to 2.30. Okay. Is, okay. is it time to Okay. Stop? The future of Asia. Uh, for, for demographic transition in Thailand, and the population is uh, 34.4 million in 1970. And uh, 62.34 million in 2000. 2000. Right now it's allowed around 64. The TFI is 6.4 and uh, in the year 2000, 2005 is 1.82. Now it's 1.6. Very fast declining. When I uh, uh, do a projection for the National Economic and Social Development Board, uh, I start using the census data. Census data is year 2000. Census data over uh, 10 years, different, every 10 years. Uh, 1990, 19, uh, 2000, 1980, 1970. In the, in the year uh, 2000, TFR from the census is 1.82. And I forecast that in the year 2025, 
TFR total of 40 billion for Thailand will be 1.6 six eight but last year it one point six two so it's declined very fast for for Thai so the this graph that I show you uh, Thailand you will be the same in another another uh, ten year for 3D, if it keep on lowing like this, right now it's 1.6. Uh, within uh, a seven year, if it start lowing like this, you know it will be around 1.4 in another uh, 15 years. So it will like Japan. I think Japan now is 1.3 or something. 1.3 or 1.27. So this check. <coughs> so if, if the fertility is uh, like Japan, you know, we, we will, the, the shape of the pyramid will, uh, in the year 2050, I think, it will be like this. In other words, the, the, the base of the pyramid will uh, uh, not wider, it will be uh, uh, narrower. Okay, so it will be like, like Italy. Italy is upside down. Uh, if we compare between uh, uh, see, country, I think the, the highest fertility is uh, maybe I'm not quite sure. Anybody know the highest fertility in the East, in the Middle East? Okay, let's look at uh, Malaysia. Okay, because Malaysia, they have a co-natalist policy. Now, Malaysia is around 24 million, but they said they want, they want to have one million people. So they are, uh, 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 we call this co-natalist policy. Finland, uh, Sweet, no, Norway, Finland, I think Sweden. For treaty is allowed uh, to. They, they are no policy, but uh, nor, like in Norway or Denmark, they want their country to be homogeneous. Okay, they have their their own children. They want they want two or three children because they want homogeneous. They don't want any uh, uh, like in the in the UK that a lot of workers mig migrate to to UK or in the in Germany in the past uh, uh, a lot of Turkish migrate. Okay. So you can see in Norway no policy, but every household have to watch three children. Uh, Myanmar no policy. Malaysia is a poor nationalist. The pyramids also uh, uh, widen. Okay, so the the uh, population policy affect the demographic outcome. Okay. Thai, five point eight. Look at this again.
So when you compare between uh, Norway, Malaysia, and Thailand, Thailand, you know, no policy now. No baby bonus policy, no, no uh, tax deduction policy. So the country is naturally, so it's declined very fast. Uh, Malaysia, they have poor nationalist policy. So with socioeconomic policy process, social outcome is another thing, and demographic process, you have both, in, in Malaysia, more for trading. In Norway, the fertility is at replacement. Replacement is 2.05. Why, why 0.05? 0.05 is the you know, proportion of the children uh, die in the, in the first year. You can see fertility rate in Thailand decline very, very, very fast. We start uh, population policy in 1970 and declining. Any, any, any research, census, survey of population change, survey of fertility, any, any uh, estimate, you know, fertility decline, and we start to have a, a below replacement around around 19. Around 1990, started right, uh, uh, below replacement. But somebody now they say that replacement is not 2.05. Replacement now should be 2.4. You know why? Uh, Share from 2.05 to 2.4. Fertility uh, measured by Number of children in each age group divided by women. Okay? So now it's 2.4 because a couple, a married couple, they should have more children for single women. Okay? So the more the more proportion single. The, the couple have the couple who marry should have more children, like a 2.4, in order to <laughs> uh, to to substitute the single single uh, 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 women or men who did not marry. Okay, I I read in the book that uh, your your uh, prime minister said that uh, single. Single female or single male is a parasite signal. Uh, I think he uh, he called single male or single female is a parasite signal because, and, and he said uh, he uh, he he create a lot of program reduce tax for the for the married men and married women, and the single men and female said why do you do this? He said. Because why you are uh, why they have to take care of the kid for the future, you people have a lot of time to go drinking or to go to have a creation. <laughs> okay. So now TFR total fertility replacement is two point four for some society. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I I just mentioned that uh, when I do a fertility. Uh, Projection. I forecast that in the year 2000, this is from census, is 1.82, and in the year 2025 is 1.7. The reason I put 1.7 is not just a number. I uh, I estimate backward, okay, and I use that coefficient to estimate forward, and I think that it will be 1.7, okay, but. Uh, uh, last year, uh, we have a survey of population chain. The fertility now is 1.6, 1.62. So I'm very worried. And now, uh, the National Economic and Social Development Board, 
Now they said, we should uh, do something about the Bokovic dividend. But it's only one, one year left. One year more for the Bokovic dividend. But it doesn't mean that after the year 2009, no demographic dividend, but it starts to decline. The proportion of the, of the, of the people uh, who buy the labor force now is 67%. It starts to decline, 66%, 65%. It's still very high proportion, but it starts to decline. Okay? Demographic transition in Thailand. Uh, uh, in Thailand, share in population growth driven by Shen Yu, fertility over the last four decades, uh, expect with profile impact on population composition. The proportion of the population below 15 years of age is projected to decline from 24.6% in the uh, year 2000 to 17.95% in 2025. After the project peak in the proportion of the population level force, at 67% uh, in the year 2009, the proportion will decline at least 62.05% in 2025. And now in the National Economic and Social Development Planning, they try to, uh, they said, they want the total fertility for Thailand to be at the replacement level. It's impossible. Now it's impossible because 1.6, they want to increase to 2.0, 2.05, and you know, there are no research found that when fertility declines below replacement, there are no research found that any country can bring it back to replacement level. No, no, not any one country. Except I think in France, uh, fertility decline and climbing up. In Singapore, declining and quite stable because they have a baby bonus, they have a love board policy, something like this. It's uh, quite stable. Okay, but, but not like this, declining and up, no. Not any country, no country. Uh, after the pro uh, projected peak in the proportion of the population in the labor force at 67.08%. The proportion is starting to decline. Okay. And this is a figure that now uh, the con we talk about the, the consequence of the fertility. Uh, this is the, 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 the nursing, the aging uh, nursing care. The nursing care in Thailand uh, take care of very little people because uh, Thai people, the, the aging people, 92% of the Thai aging stay with the family. And out of this 92%, 72% uh, is uh, the, the elderly stay with uh, their son or their daughter. Okay. But this pattern we share, uh, we, we can show you uh, later on that. This the the, the 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 support by the by, by the by the family is starting to, to share to more public service. Okay. Again, the uh, varying curve or the proportion of the population be, uh, population below 15 and uh, between 15 to 59, the proportion curve of the aging population 60 plus is moving very fast in a search of a double increase from 20 to 20, 20%. It is like a, a, a tsunami wave that carry a negative impact on the, on the society. This study called uh, some of the situation and the tsunami aging population phenomenon. This phenomenon is expected to bring negative impact on the Thai society in the near future. In, in other words, Thailand, you have a chance to enjoy the optimum condition of the demographic dividend uh, for no more than two years from now. Then after Thailand will be in a transition to a demographic honors unless an appropriate policy intervention is adopted. Maybe we have a break now.
So when the proportion, this one dependency ratio from from point five five two in two thousand. This area, this area, this is the window of opportunity for the developing dividend or the golden age. Because more labor, you know, 67 percent in the labor, right? less uh, uh, proportion uh, is less than 40, but increasing uh, proportion aging. But uh, very high proportion in the labor force. But later on, you, know, you can see increasing over time, the dependency, dependency ratio increasing. So uh, you can see that demographic dividend declining, declining. Demographic dividend related to the dependency ratio. This is the life expectancy. Now, female 76.2, male 69. But uh, life expectancy at age 60, in other words, if a uh, male uh, live till age 60, they have 16.8, 16.9 year old. Okay, uh, female 20 years old. We have life expectancy uh, E zero. E zero is life expectancy at birth, and E sixty is life expectancy at age sixty. Can I translate? Okay. Uh, the E zero is the zero よみょ、残ってる命、残ってる命。で、E60っていうのは60歳児の平均よみょ。え、だからその前に死んじゃった人たちの分は引いて、だから60まで来た人はまだ持ってきられるんですね。え、という考え方です。So you can see that uh, female live six years longer than male. But usually, you know, uh, in Thailand, uh, male marry male older than the husband older than wife three years. So the, 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 the wife is a uh, is a widow's nine years. <laughs> See, because they live longer six years, but they are older three years. So that that why when you when you look at the sex sex ratio uh, for for the marriage sex ratio uh, at age uh, 60 uh, around 0.8 in other words more more women than men because men men uh, uh, die younger this related to the drinking and smoking <laughs> No, no, because they're working too much, no exercise, and they're drinking after work. Okay. <laughs> because physically, it should be quite the same. Physically. But they, uh, you see, they die uh, six years earlier than better than female. Okay, now Asia. Asia Asian uh, priority in the most dividend in, in Asia, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore are the pioneer in obtain the most dividend. Uh, and one third of the economic growth in South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore during 1960-1990 can be attributed to such a demographic shift with two children per women and 2.7 per in percent increase in labor force growth per year. You can read uh, this article in the David, David Room, Demographic David. Uh, in the handout, I also uh, have a citation for David Room, the Demographic David. Uh, he studied this. And also, you can read more in uh, Andrew Mason, uh, Ron Lee, 
carbon, uh, of this demographic uh, dividend, and, and about the related between economic growth and, and the population change. Other Southeast Asia countries are now with an opportunity for demographic dividend according to the Asian uh, Development Bank ADB, the demographic dividend in Southeast Asia is currently a, a, approximately 0.7% point of per capita annual income growth. The figure is expected to double in the year 2015. But this one has to adjust with the economic crisis. This one before the economic crisis. And Thailand, we have to not adjust only the economic crisis, but also the, the political hectic two time, one day closed the airport and the second time last week. For any on ASEAN member country to experience a decline in T, uh, TFR, you know the TFR, total fertility rate is uh, number of children a couple have uh, during the childbearing age. The childbearing age for the women is 15 to 49. We call it childbearing age. Up to 2025, the TFR will we will be very 2045 to 2050, the United Medium top projection adjust the TFR of our ASEAN member country to 1.85. Uh, this is quite difficult because now uh, they are, the average is allowed 1.6, 1.7, but the, the, the UN projection, you know, when, when declining to, to the some extent, they said it's going up to around 1.8. They just, they just uh, think that the government policy will increase uh, uh, the fertility. Uh, maybe uh, we, we have to study in detail what happened in, in, in France, what happened in Norway, what happened in, in, in Finland, and, and lesson learned from that. Okay. Life expectancy as birth uh, increased uh, this is in ASEAN, uh, increased the uh, range uh, between 58.8 to 79.7. Uh, despite improving the life expectancy in all countries of the region, uh, Laos is 72.2, Cambodia 69.8, which continue to have lower life expectancy at birth uh, when compared to other ASEAN members. On the same time, Singapore will continue to have the highest life expectancy, followed by Brunei and Malaysia. You see, the, the figure I just showed you, uh, this one, life expectancy. Uh, now, the demographer in Thailand now start to worry again that uh, maybe the, the life expectancy may be lower than this because the age, you know, the age is coming back. You know, S A I D S S is coming back. The the team S I V S is coming back because now the the team Asia because of the post war now the uh, <coughs> what time figure is starting to come in. So the life expectancy may be declining a little because life expectancy. Uh, you cover it by using the, a specific <coughs> dead rate for each age group. And you convert this to the probability of dying, and you convert this to the life expectancy. Yeah. Uh, the most in, in ASEAN, three you know opportunity. Uh, this one from uh, Dr. Pachalawalai paper. And uh, Chinese cleaners. Uh, Scandinavia investigation in, on East Southeast Asian countries suggests a very page of the uh, degree of economic benefits to be obtained to be, to be attained among them. The first window is Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, with the shortest remaining period of the profit dividend, no rather than 2015. And the second window is the Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar. And the third one is the Philippines, Cambodia, Laos. 
this this depends on the 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 fastened decline in fertility. The, uh, the fastened for, uh, decline fertility will will uh, benefit uh, the first window. Okay. Singapore, Thai, Vietnam, very uh, fertility decline very fast. Singapore very fast. Thai very fast. Vietnam starting to decline. Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, this is the uh, Muslim country. And uh, Myanmar, uh, Myanmar, uh, my guess, uh, some also deal with the mortality pattern. When, when, uh, when you have, when the country have very high infant mortality rate, uh, demographers say that the intrauterine and replacement level will be increased. In other words, like I say in the, in the first hour, uh, when, the, when the couple, uh, they, their children die, so they have more children to replace the, the, the one who died. Okay? The third window in the Philippines, Cambodia, now PDA. Uh, you know, uh, Philippines and Thai, we, we have one study. Uh, you can look in the book uh, by UN. Uh, for, for Thailand, I'm, I'm the investigator, and also Dr. Pachinawalai. We compare Thailand and Philippines, uh, Tunisia and Algeria, uh, uh, Bangladesh and, and Sri Lanka. This is Thai and Philippines. We start to have population policy at the same time in 1970. When we start to have a uh, population policy, Philippines have uh, 30,000 population more than Thailand. And the fertility is starting to decline quite the same time. But after Marcos, I think it's around 1980 or something, uh, now the, the, the Catholic Church is coming uh, to influence. Now fertility is starting to increase. Now, uh, Philippines, I think they have uh, maybe about 9 million people more than Thai. Within 30 years, from 30,000 to 10,000. I think we, we, can, we can look at this. Uh, this, uh, this, this program is uh, by I, I bought from, he, he worked at the IESA. This is a program that you, if you want, you can buy from, from they call it the, the demographic tool. And it's and very, very, very good when you want to uh, use to explain to the, to the student, or you can use to uh, explain uh, for your, if you're, when I teach the business demography, uh, people who work in the business, you know, I explain that uh, you have to use demographic data before you sell it something. Uh, okay, when, when I compare to the team, We start a, a population policy is same. The, the figure is quite the same. See, in 1990, I think in 1980, the the, the is uh, out, and now the the, the Catholic Church uh, they said the family planning is against the, the religious, so. Now we deviate. The population is deviated. See, so the, 
when you look at the uh, population and, and development, the, the curve, demographic process, demographic outcome, economic process, economic outcome. This one you can see the relation between uh, population share and economic and uh, uh, socioeconomic policy effect uh, population. So it's a cycle. So it depends on which policy you deal with the social policy and which policy you deal with the fertility policy. Okay. Uh, Vietnam, uh, I, I mentioned to you that uh, Vietnam is in the first window. Uh, if you look at the, the green one, demographic dividend start and will decline in the year 2010. The green one. See? And the, 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 uh, the, the pink one, the pink is the 0 to 14 is starting to decline and the aging is increasing. For Malaysia, uh, I think the demographic dividend will decline maybe around uh, 2020. 20, 20. But it, the, the aging, uh, right now the aging is only around 7%. Indonesia, uh, maybe in the year 2020, uh, proportion of the, of the labor force is starting to decline. So prospect of demographic dividend uh, capitalization, most Asian countries have uh, stimulated their demand for quality human development. However, a big gap in human development within the ASEAN region in 1990 with the human development HDI, ranking from 0.186 in the case of Cambodia and 0.849 in the case of Singapore. So you can see that the difference in human capital uh, Singapore almost 100% uh, bachelor degree. Okay. When compared with other countries, Thailand, we use uh, research money. The government spent 0.24 of the GDP. GDP is 8 million million baht. 0.24 is allowed. We spend every year uh, 18,000 baht. Singapore used 2% of the GDP. That GDP is five times Thailand. So they use a lot of money using for research. Okay. Uh, Japan, I think 3.4% of the GDP. Your GDP is 10 times, maybe 12 times of the Thailand. So when you look at the outcome, because you use a lot of money for research, the outcome you have 200,000 patents uh, in the year 2007. Thailand, we have 60 patents. You have 200,000. Uh, scientific paper in the year 2007, scientific paper in the ISI paper, we have uh, 1,000 paper in the ISI. You know ISI? When you publish your paper in the journal, that international standard with the uh, impact factor, Thai have only 1,000. Japan, uh, I think it's uh, 40,000 in the ISI. Because you use 3% of your GDP, we use 0.24% of the GDP. You want to? Uh, I, I think I have this. This, uh, this uh, if you give me some time, because I I present this to. I'm the vice president of this affair, so I I show this figure to the to the university council that uh, uh, they said they want uh, Jula to be a world class university. I said it's very difficult to to be a world class university if. The government spend very, very low amount of money. Uh,
<coughs> Thailand 0.24 of the GDP. Japan 3.2 percent of the GDP. And the GDP I think is 12 or 14 times. Uh, you have seven R&D personnel per 1,000. We have 0.6 very low. Okay. And pay attention, you have uh, 100, not, not 200,000. You have 100,000. We have 60 pay attention. You have uh, 60,000 scientific articles. We have, we have 1,000. Korea, 13,000. Singapore, Singapore have only 4 million people. We have 64 million, but they have more paper than us. Okay, so the, when you invest less in human capital, the output is less. And I, I another figure I, I, I showed them that. Thai people is like this. See? When you invest more money, you have very huge tacit knowledge. Thai, very, very little explicit knowledge, not a tacit knowledge. Yeah. This is not the most everything. <laughs> okay. So the HDI, uh, despite regional improvement in HDI, uh, Lao, uh, PDA, uh, the ASEAN member with the lowest HDI, Tapuchia, Myanmar, right? Singapore, point eight for Thailand. 0.68. Okay, prospect for demographic dividend uh, capitalization, in particular, the e education and training environment in a number of Asian countries has not met the demand. A large number of the working population, particularly in Southeast Asia, is unable to adapt themselves to meet the demand of a flexible labor market. Uh, most of them lack of appropriate policy and support institution to make their growing workforce productive enough to achieve sufficient growth before and increase in the old and dependency ratio. In other words, you know, uh, when I write a paper to the National Economic and Social Development Board, I say that uh, Thailand demographic dividend is starting to decline. You have to improve productivity for the labor force. And in order to improve productivity, you have to improve the human capital. And in order to improve the human capital, not only education, but a very well, a very high skill and very high competency. Okay. You have to uh, spend more on research. Okay. Rather than, you know, Buying knowledge from outside, you have to create your own research. You have to cr create your own knowledge. Because if you, if you buy knowledge, it's, a, it's an explicit knowledge, it's not a tacit knowledge. If you know the difference between explicit and tacit knowledge. Right? The explicit knowledge, when they give lecture, uh, you know the explicit knowledge for me. When, when you read a book, uh, the knowledge for the book is the explicit knowledge. Okay? But if you, when you read the book and you go out and, or, or you are a scientist, you go to the lab and you do learning by doing research, you share from your explicit to tacit knowledge. Okay? When you, uh, as, a, as a social side, as a society, we go to the field work, we interview uh, people, we conduct a focus group, we share explicit to tacit knowledge. Okay? Most of them lack appropriate policy, okay. No. We have so I, I, I try to convince the government that you have to invest more in research. You have to invest more in human capital. 
Moreover, the alternative strategy in labor mig migration has not been able to allow them to fully optimize or to maximize the demographic dividend. They are rather self-defeating. I said they are, they are defeating because you know you didn't improve the human capital. You have more labor, but most of them are semi-skilled, not a skilled labor, not a te technical, not a professional. Okay. A side effect of policy has been that my grant, the employer and the national economies now have to face trap of insecure and unstable unsta socioeconomic development. The problem turned itself into an increasing socioeconomic pressure on society and can be expected to aggravate in a few decades to come when the demographic dividend in the region is facing away turning instead into an honors. Okay. So now uh, the ASEAN, a, a very uh, high proportion in the labor force, but mostly are semi-skilled or, or unskilled. Okay. So even, even you have uh, uh, more labor income than consumption, but the saving also still very, very little. But if you have high proportion of the labor with a very high skill, very high uh, labor income, do you have more saving? Okay. In the 21st century, rapid aging will progressively become a global phenomenon in a globalized world. The realization of the potential of the elderly worker is a recent phenomenon to reduce societal and household dependency at all age while contributing to the improved well-being of the elderly. Nevertheless, employment and employability of the elderly remain a political debate in many societies. Okay, uh, another, another thing that uh, uh, we are facing is that, uh, uh, like in Thailand uh, now, they said the, the retirement is they want to expand 60 to 65 years. Okay. But some people said, well, don't do that. Because if you expand 60 to 65 uh, with the unskilled labor, it uh, really less multiplier effect. So they are debating. Okay. Like, like in university, uh, we have a, the government have a policy expand uh, the, the retirement 60 to 65. But not every professor can be uh, uh, increase the retirement. If you want to increase your retirement age, you have to be full, fully professor, full professor. But if you are associate professor, you have to show the pa in the past five years whether you have a, a, a good record producing a paper. If, if you don't have a good record in producing a, 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 a paper, they will not extend your <laughs> retirement age. <laughs> and every year, uh, uh, when, when they extend, you have to show the, the paper every year for the for for the professor. Even you are professor, and they, they they will hire you year by year. Okay, so the the the. They are debating on the, the, the uh, employability of the elderly women. Okay. The issue of dignity can be the case for those elderly with uh, low educational level, poor health, and lack of technological skill to carry out jobs in a knowledge-based society. The problem may be worse if employ employer maintain education. Regarding the support of the elderly, uh, the trend are in two directions. Uh, one direction is the decline traditional family support, like in China and Japan. The support ratio in China decreased from 13.8 in 1950 to 10% and 2.7 in the year 2000 and 2050. A decrease from 12.1 to 1.4 in the corresponding year in Japan. 
a policy push for ongoing intergeneration support for the elderly in addition to state-based support for Southeast Asian countries. Yet, uh, during 2020-50, the support ratio of the, for the elderly is expected to decline uh, from 15.3 to 4.2 in Malaysia and uh, to 4.8 in Indonesia. Okay, this data again, uh, this by Paul Bimian. Uh, support ratio, support ratio is the, the person age 15 to 64 uh, divided by uh, person 65 and older. So it's declined very fast. In Italy, you see, Italy, in the year 1936, support ratio is 8.1. Uh, right now it's around maybe 3.4. And 2050, it's mean that uh, person who are, who are working in the age 15 to 64, 1.4 people take care of one. Okay. For Japan, uh, year 2000 is 4.0. 2050 is 1.4. For Thai, uh, 2050 is 2.7. Okay. That's why I explain that uh, people in this, in this room, you have to save maybe 40 or 50 percent of your salary. Okay, this is the, uh, the work. Female labor force. I, I, I show this that we have M curve only two years, 1998 and 1999. They, they work and they uh, have the job to take care of their children and go back. This is M curve, uh, Professor Imiko, Oceani. And uh, you see, for for the year 2000, no more. This, this uh, first we thought that the M curve for Thai would be you know, steeper and steeper. In other words, they, they keep on have children and uh, when they have children, they uh, out of work, take care of children. I think we will follow the, 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 Jap the Japanese uh, curve. But only two years, the third year no more. So it's very difficult, so we will be interviewed. Uh, women do not don't want to have children because they said, uh, why bother? Because they have to out their job and very difficult to find work and very, dif very difficult to find a childcare in Bangkok. You see, we have, uh, I, I, I studied first uh, childcare in the year 1991. In Bangkok, we have allowed 500 child care. And later on, you know, it's declining very fast because the land, uh, the land price in Thai is, in Bangkok is very expensive. So they said, uh, if they have a child care, you know, uh, or when they sell the land, they get more interest rate more than uh, doing Chai Thai business. And Chai Thai business is very touchy. You see, when, when, the, when their children uh, fall out, uh, their father, mother, grandfather, grandmother phone to let's go and say, why? What happened? Why you take care? <laughs> why you don't take care and good to, to our children? So they said, they, so they, they just sell their land. And they said the, the interest there from selling the land is higher than doing the child care business. And another thing is that uh, in that first marriage, a demographer we, we study in that first marriage, uh, in that first marriage increase for, 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 for uh, uh, women and also men. In that first marriage increase and that first birth also increased. Usually, and that first birth means that uh, usually 18 months when, you, uh, when they marry, 18 months they have the first child. But right now, maybe 
average of around three to four years to have a first child. So when they start to have the first child, uh, women is around 31. And it's becoming for infertility. If you go to Bangkok, they have a lot of cleaning. They call it infertility cleaning. You know what infertility cleaning means? Okay. <laughs> So the, you can see that uh, uh, infertility clinic in Bangkok increased a lot because of this phenomenon. Uh, let's comment strategy at individual country level, for example, uh, uh, liberation of a long term fertility goal and policy is needed. An important tool is to rely on social cultural approach to investigate fertility and family formation behavior, linking the trend of age at first marriage and the age at first birth, both of which related to the M curve pattern of female labor force participation. We try to uh, use this model to explain the, the policy maker, but they always said it's a very long term policy. Uh, they want to use uh, their money uh, uh, to the policy that, I mean, people can see it within six months or one year because the political situation in Thailand you know, changed within three to six months. So they don't need long-term policy. This is a really long-term policy. <laughs> Curb and female labor force participation because you have to deal uh, with the private company. Because the private company, they always say that if it's a one year maternal leave, they say that uh, their, their, their company is, uh, is in trouble. But I, I always say that if you let, uh, we, uh, if you let uh, women uh, one year on leave, this is not a consumption. It's an investment for the human capital, for the people for the nation. Okay, so you have to differentiate between consumption. Consumption will be related to the public, to the public, uh, to the uh, social, to the, like a, what you call it, to the public policy. Uh, this, is not, this is not consumption, this is investment. Okay? Policy of risk management requires both before and after the demographic dividend fading away child care and healthy dignity or age population arrangement. Priority for a country with relative poor human development, education, child care, health dignity, aging, and female level force participation. Policy making also needs to take into account. You see, when uh, last month, uh, our college, our population study, we present uh, uh, about the study on the on the aging population by uh, Professor Vipang uh, to, the, to the Prime Minister visit. Actually, they are in, in the same classmate uh, uh, when they study uh, in a compulsory school. So we, when, when we present this one, uh, the, the government increased the monthly allowance for the aging from 300 baht to 600 baht. Not that much, but you know, it's, it's twice from 300 to 600. Priority for country with relative poor human development, education, child care, healthy dignity. We, we need a policy making also need to take into account human development and activity pattern of migration. And uh, policy to support by other public, economic, and finance, financial policy so as to encourage more productive activity of our population and strengthening intergenerational solidarity to be expressed to adequate social protection of the elderly and low social developer for the formation of the social capital as a basis for sustained dignity at the individual, family, and societal level. You see, uh, as I told you that uh, when we study uh, in the year uh, I think in 1995, uh, we, we interviewed P 
people is 50 and above, and uh, for the for the people is 60 and above, when we ask uh, uh, who support you or who, who are you staying with, 92 percent stay with the family, and most of the elderly always say that actually I support my my son and, and my daughter because. Uh, when when they graduate, the salary is very low. I still give them extra money. Okay, and then why you need this? They said because this is this is a supporting system in Thailand. And the elderly supports their kid, and when they are getting more aging, the kid will support them. Okay. Recommend. Uh, or regional cooperation. The key strategy one is to enhance productivity of the regional workforce via lifelong learning and training up for all the uh, irrespective of age, both stock and supply. And to uh, gravitate the un semi skilled labor force and bring them up to the value share as regional human capital. Key strategy number two is to minimize such burden as a health problem and other costs before the future turn green. And the key strategy tree to region, regional human resource pooling towards an extension a demographic dividend for our country in the region. This is something like a, the EU, uh, the Western Europe is the aging population. And the, the Eastern Europe is the uh, very high proportion of the labor force. When the Eastern and and the Western, uh, the Western and Eastern mix together to be in EU, the pyramid becoming better. Right? Western is aging and the Eastern Europe is more proportionate in the labor force. So when they mix together as an EU, is the EU population pyramid becoming uh, more, uh, more labor? Okay? So if the ASEAN 10 country uh, ASEAN 10 country population, you see, they, they have a meeting in Pattaya in order to do this kind of thing, but because we're political in Thailand, uh, the, the meeting is did a success. Very, <laughs> very poor opportunity. <coughs> okay, point of concern, the following should be taken into account by initiate and formulating policy recommendation, the pace of fertility transition. Uh, this is how to, you know, uh, further uh, expand the, the, the demographic dividend. The pace of fertility transition is how to uh, extend the, the, the fertility level. You see, Thailand now is 1.6. How, if it keep on 1.6, it's still okay. But if it's declining to 1.3, we, we we, this will create more more proportion in the aging. So how to pace the fertility transition, the first one. The second one is the pace and the length of time when the demographic dividend is taking place. But in other words, how, how to prolong the, the, the high proportion of the labor force, prolong timing, and also how to uh, uh, make use of this high proportion of the labor force, uh, make them more uh, skill and competency. Okay. The shorter uh, A and B, the more concern to be given to enhancing the skill and competency of the workforce. Cause they will have uh, they have to take care more of the dependency group at the time of an increasing proportion of age. And D, an integrative approach towards child care and elderly care at the family, the government, and the community level. Okay. Any question? Question. Okay, <coughs> this is uh, just to show you uh, Thailand aging society is very fast. Uh, this one, uh, 2513, uh, is 19, 1970. Uh, this is uh, uh, after, after Buddhist, right? B uh, AD, after that, this is AD. If you want to change to VC, you minus 543. 
Okay? This one to 513 AD. Huh? What is error? Oh, VE. Okay. You minus. えっと、この西暦に見える陽気たの数字を物理的ですので、え、543って言いました。をマイナスすれば、えっと、クリスチャン的に直ります。時々体の数字はこれですので気をつけてください。Sorry. <笑> The second one, 25 to 29, this is father and mother. And this 50 to 54 is the grandfather, grandmother. And this is more than is 35, is the great grandfather, great grandmother. Okay, so in 1970, uh, very high proportion, zero to four. This one is uh, 2000. And 10. You minus 543. 2010. The peak is at the group 25 to 29. Father and mother. But if you add great grandfather and grandfather, this will be the majority. In the year 2050, great grandfather is the highest proportion. This is time. But if you have time, you can cover it for Japan. Uh, faster than this. Okay? So in this room, when you are uh, becoming great grandfather, maybe only one, one point three uh, labor take care of one elderly. Okay. <coughs> My, my son is an architecture. He said this, this graph is very difficult to understand. So he helped me drawing this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, in uh, 1970. Uh, this is 1970. And this is uh, 20, 2025. One, one child take care of father and mother, grandfather, four grandfather, grandmother and to great-grandfather. In the year 2050, the worst. Okay, aging society, for is a topic. There are many, okay, this one is the, like I mentioned that, the second dividend, the saving, okay, you can, I think we have to think about, you know, second dividend, what kind of policy, uh, to, to use the saving money, some for uh, public policy, some for investment. Uh, Thai, Thai people may be uh, uh, in, in good shape because we can follow the Japanese policy, but uh, Japanese uh, have uh, 15 uh, times higher <coughs> GDP than Thai, so you can have more variety of policy than Thai. <coughs> healthcare, you know, you can look at the all medicine, uh, all, medic, all medicare, on health and wellness topic, long-term care, housing mobility, uh, end of life. <coughs> in Chunanungon, the faculty of architecture, uh, they went into the remote, uh, the, the remote area, and they said, uh, you can use the bamboo, right? the bamboo wood, to, mail, uh, to, to make a uh, stick for the elderly, to make a chair for the elderly. Uh, 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 in the remote country, usually Thai house is very high because of the funding. So uh, the, the architecture said you have to uh, uh, build, uh, chain the elderly from the second floor to the first floor. Okay, and the less room, and the, uh, uh, the less room, bigger less room had to be small. Because when the elderly fall, uh, you fall to the, to the wall. But if the, the less room is big, you fall uh, on the floor. Okay? 
And usually the, the door is open like this in the rest room. With the elderly, you have to open like this. Because if the elderly fail in the, in the rest room, you cannot, you cannot open the rest room if it's like this. Okay. And you know why the rest room has to open like this? You know why? You have to open like this because if you don't open like this, suppose the water is leaking, the water will come out. But if you open like this, the floor in the rest room is lower than the outside. <laughs> so you have to shed, you have to open like this. But usually, no, but in Japan, uh, even in, in the Saifu, Saikan is open like this, not open in. That, that's a good way. Because if you open like this, you cannot help the elderly when they fall down. Or you can change the door to like this. Okay? Uh, money, social security, social security reform, financial and service. Uh, so when say of social security or social social topic, pension, retirement, saving, public assistance, Medicare, supplement and security, or public assistance topic, loan, credit, debt, uh, mortgage, or or we have to think about money also and the life, family and leisure, uh, grand parental lifestyle, work and retirement. Uh, this. We have to do a lot of research on, on this you know, personal legal issue, technology, and also the, con uh, the consumer, the full service, uh, government registration, and this kind of thing. That we have to uh, think about uh, the policy and research topic on this. Uh, this is the data, the data show that uh, being in Thailand, double income low tip is increasing. This one I also present last time. With, uh, showing the professor in, in the group. You can see that uh, uh, this one is the, the year. You have to minus 5 for 3. The yellow one is husband and wife. The pink one is husband, husband and wife and, what, and a child. And the blue one is husband and wife husband or wife and a child, okay? So in the year, uh, nine, in the year 1999, husband and wife and, and a child is the highest. Uh, five years later, you, know, it's, you see this one declining, but the thing, double income notice, double income notice is the blue one. Double income, okay. Husband and wife increased. Husband and wife and kid declined. Okay. You can look at this data. And also, sing, single income, no kid, it means uh, marriage is declining. Both uh, male and female, they want to be, uh, they don't want to marry. And the, and the divorce rate is increased a lot from 357 to 4549. That's why I said the TFR total, for the replacement should be 2.4. In other words, the married couple, they should have more children uh, substitute for the single male and female. Okay, and this one, uh, just to show that a specific particular in the state of California, also the same thing. That the pattern shared, you can see in 1970, the peak is at S, 20 to 24, right? Uh, the year 2000, the peak is shared to 20, 25 to 29. This one to show you also in Thai also happened this way. Uh, the, 
the green one, the green one. You see the green one peak at is 20 to 24. This is a uh, whole nation, the, the whole kingdom. The pink, no, no, the purple one. Is it purple? The purple one is a uh, rural area. Rural area is specific for treating the peak at is 20 to 24. But in urban area, the the orange color it peak at 25 to 29. In other words, uh, the, uh, they marry they, they marry older, right? And they have their children in the first birth also increase. Okay, so this pattern is the same with the California. And when when they uh, uh, more educated, the age at first marriage also increase all the time. And when, when you increase the age at first marriage and age at first birth, infertility is also increased. You know why infertility increase? Because infertility increased with age. Okay. Okay. This is the this is the pattern. Uh, Thai. Uh, this is not in the handout. Uh, this is by Andrew Mason. <laughs> no, no, in the handout. Right? No. Oh, yes, yeah, in the handout. Okay. All is leo location system. If the tra traditional society uh, like a Thai, you know, we are in this family of Thai for. Uh, Japan may be around this one between saving and public transfer. Okay. Uh, capital based tran transformation you change from from family transfer to saving or saving. Uh, if it's more uh, industrialized country, it would be more public transfer. Okay. And the study by by Andrew Mason look like this time now. Thailand is a mix of saving and family transfer in 1996. We study uh, uh, in 1985, in 1985, Thai is around here. Now it's moved to here. Meaning that family more saving and also more uh, family support. In the US, it's between this one uh, the saving and public transfer. And for uh, Japan is here. Public time for uh, more than more than US. And Taiwan is mixed between this one and this one. If you if you read uh, the book uh, uh, by uh, Professor Imiko, uh, the, the one that you, you transfer into Thai, it's about uh, marriage. Uh, the marriage pattern, you can see that you know, the, 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 the marriage pattern for Korea is changing type, you know, and also Thai also changing type. Now the Korea, they change from 0.2% uh, uh, marry outside now, around 20% marry outside. I think you can, you can draw this triangle. Uh, mar marry inside the, the nation, marry outside the nation. Like a Thai, in the northeast of Thailand, uh, a European country marry a lot of uh, Thai women in the northeast. It's changing like a, in, in, in the Professor Ibiko paper, changing pattern of marriage for Korea and changing uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, marriage also, also for Thai. But this one, all at the location, you can see Thai, you know, shading from 92% here, moving here. Taiwan mixed between uh, family support and public support. Yeah. So this is the, uh, the figure show, this is the, like a second dividend with the uh, saving from the labor income higher than the consumption. So it depends on the policy that uh, 
you want people to still saving or some will be public transfer, it depends. But usually, uh, uh, in the economic term, we, we, we don't want to say it's a welfare. We, we always think about consumption or investment. Okay. Uh, that's it. Any question? This is general uh, on auditorium. study, I, I don't remember, maybe 20 to 25 nations come up with this graph uh, or as their location system. Some, some country, mostly in February of time for, like in Thailand, okay? Some are between family time for and public time for, like in Taiwan. Uh, Japan, mostly time, it between public time for and saving, so it's like this. And, and this is theoretical. And when they when they get the data, and the data is like this, this one. So they said Thailand is between uh, Fabio and Sebi, and Taiwan is allowed this, U.S. allowed this, Japan around Costa Rica is like this. Okay. So with this one, and they said second dividend uh, come up. Uh, increase in demand for OF resources and can be uh, expansion of OF transfer program or increase in capital economic growth secondary. In other words, with this figure, if uh, you have a lot of saving, right, this saving, part, part of the saving can put into the public transfer and part of the saving can be investment. Okay. If you 
use the saving more to this to this part this part is like a public transfer. You spend less in investment. Okay. Yes, so uh, this this graph is the the situation that Japan more public transfer uh, U.S. Uh, saving and this one. So the saving, uh, the U.S. maybe they, uh, the OS people spend a lot in the in the, in the stock market. That's why when the economy crisis, they in trouble. <laughs> okay. Yes. Very, very good question. Thank you. Actually, uh, our presentation today is just an appetizer uh, to bring you more to the uh, future class I mean, this week and the following. Actually, Andrew Mason, when he talked about the work of his David in the second one, he said this is the, something that is really going on now, that is what is now. But he said if we let this, this one, if we rely too much on the public transfer, on this, like too much on this, they said that the uh, the economy, economic growth will not be sustained in future times because uh, the size of the pop people in the aging society will grow and grow and grow. So the idea, which remains to be uh, to do further research, is that we should have some kind of a a balanced approach between this one and another approach for uh, like a community-based, institutional-based, institutional so that the people themselves will feel that they are, they become uh, more strengthened in their capacity and also their own dignity rather than to be just a person to be depend on, on, on the nation or other people to provide them welfare. So it's, he said, if we depend too much on public transfer or welfare, that is not good for the future. And if we have come up with a, a new policy, an alternative policy, that people feel that they are become strengthened in their own capacity, the second dividend would be ongoing eternity. But that is only a, an idea, a theory that he and his colleague in the in the in Hawaii is is um, launching this idea of, of um, second demographic dividend. We will discuss this more in future class. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? So you can see that uh, we have a lot of work for the social regime. Yeah, this one, this one uh, related to to this speaker. This one related to. This one. He said that this is uh, now the big one is is the level income. This is consumption. More saving, individual more saving. And individual individual saving can be uh, similar. If the government have uh, like a uh, like in Thailand, we have a 
long term saving. If you uh, the long term saving can uh, be tax reduction, six hundred thousand baht per year. If you if you save in the long term, long term saving, you have to save till you age sixty. Uh, it's a tax examination, six hundred thousand. In the past five year, two hundred thousand. Now it increased. So instead of you save in the normal bank, you save in this one. You cannot withdraw, but you can reduce your income and lower it six hundred thousand baht. So, so do you think? Uh, so social policy, uh, uh, public uh, policy, also uh, have an effect yeah, on the, the amount of saving. Yes. So do you think Singaporean policy is effective? Uh, they do not allow uh, transfers. Uh, uh, mm, uh, well, okay. Uh, I think we do not have much time today, so uh, I want to discuss this later. Okay. Ah, hi, Asakusan. I'm sorry to speak, speak again. Uh, one question is relating to uh, Jason's question. Uh, it, um, the role of the government probably cannot be trust, trustful in the future, as I understand. Probably the responsibility of the self and the responsibility of the family and the responsibility of the community will be bigger in the future. However, I would like to ask. Um, talking about the responsibility of self, yes, I understand, but in case of Singapore, Provident, Provident Fund cannot sustain herself because the saving is not, uh, cannot reach the amount that she, he or he needs in the, after retirement. This is one. And the second thing is that the, uh, regarding family, when we talk about family, actually it's a role of women, more on women, women's children. So, uh, uh, what do you think about this? I mean, the, for example, the uh, feminist movement in Thailand, what do they think about the women's role in terms of the welfare in the after retirement? And uh, that's my question. Thirdly, thirdly, uh, you were talking about, yes, capital, uh, human resource development will be very important to compensate for the uh, population decrease. Yes, I understand. And in Japan, we are facing the same situation. And one thing is human resource development, the other thing is uh, migrant worker. And the problem is if you import migrant worker from neighboring country, you, you mentioned that the human development index in those countries, neighboring countries, is quite low. So if you import foreign worker, it means that the, probably there will be a new hierarchy between the highly skilled Thai uh, worker versus those um, uh, unskilled labor. Uh, what kind of, uh, I can, Discussion? Do you have in the government to for the future direction? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I think I, I I explained the last the last one first because you you see the the pyramid pyramid like this. Pyramid of worker is also like, like this one. You, you need a low skill, semi skill, blue collar and collar. But you see, uh, Thai, uh, we shame the education system in the year 1999. The compulsory school increased from six years to nine years. But a lot of factory they still think that the pyramid of industry is the same. Okay, they still want to uh, high low skill, but we economy we said you you increase the compulsory school from six year to nine year. So this pyramid, the lower labor force, this pyramid is unskilled. You have to share this pyramid to this. Uh, the lower part should be semi skill but they don't want to change. So they hide the illegal migrant. Okay. So I said, you increase the education level, but you you still 
want uh, too high raw skill. So the, the, the student who, who gain a, a nine year, they are underemployed. If they want to work, they have to be underemployed. So, the, the, so this, this depends on the, on the policy of the government. But the government says the increase in the level of the education is Ministry of Education. But the level for the industry is Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Industry. They still want the, the factory to keep on uh, learning. So they create uh, uh, two million uh, low skill labor. So, so this one we have to uh, compensate between one one point and another point. Okay. Now they are in trouble because, uh, according to the labor force survey, uh, students who 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 have a twelve year uh, education, underemployment forty seven percent. Underemployment is mean that underemployed they, they have failed year uh, education level, but they work at the at the factory uh, with the, the primary school, or some have to work less than thirty five hours. Okay. Uh, so we we when you increase your human capital, you have to change uh, this pattern of pyramid of labor also. Uh, okay, the, the, the side of aging. The, the second one, you talk about the, the saving, and uh, you see this one, the surplus of, of, of saving. Uh, individuals have to save for themselves. Also, the government have to stimulate this kind of saving by introducing tax examination or anything. And also, uh, the government have to use this as an as a endowment. They cannot use this endowment to, for, the, for the investment. If they want to invest, they have to borrow, borrow only the interest rates of this endowment. They cannot use the whole amount of this endowment but because this is endowment. And it's very difficult to forecast because this endowment, you know, like in Singapore, they, they think that this endowment is enough for the worker when they're getting home. But uh, there's a scenario think that life expectancy can be at 75 years. But now it's 85. So they live longer. And when they live longer, uh, uh, the institutional hospital cannot support, okay? So the money that you plan is not enough because the center is to, uh, 75, uh, life, expectancy, life expectancy is 75, but now it's 85. And, and this group of people, we call it older, uh, older uh, old. We have older people, right? We have older old people, it's been more than 75 is old as old. So it's difficult. Because you know, live longer and, and spend more money, use more money. The third question. You have three questions, but I have one. Okay. Probably we have okay. to close. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Professor Kua. Uh, we we want to uh, continue our discussion, but well, time is over, so we can uh, uh, continue our discussions. Uh, well, next week with uh, Professor Pachalamala. So thank you very much, Professor Kua. ついでに説明したこと、シンガポールは強制貯蓄制度なんですよ。今その話をしてたんです。個人間での再再分配がなくて強制貯蓄なんです。年金の代わりに。それでシンガポールの例外が出てました。<笑><笑>